Hi, I'm Chris Ralph, the Professional Prospector, and welcome back to my channel. Hey, today we're going to do part three of processing black sands. Black sands are something that every prospector has to deal with, whether you're out panning or sluicing or dry washing, dredging, you know, you name it. Eventually, you're going to end up with a black sand concentrate, and I'm going to talk about you know, I've talked about how to process this. I did my first video and I'll put a link to that wait, up here, put a link to that up here. And in that first video, I processed some black sands that I got dry washing. And I just finished one a little bit ago, a second one. And I'll put a link to that one well, up here. And that one is about uh, uh, processing some beach sand concentrates with super fine, flat, flaky gold that's just very tough to recover. And uh, I gave it my best shot and, well, tune in and see how it went. Uh, you can see whether I passed the test or not. Today, we're gonna talk about a larger amount. You got a much larger than the small amount that I had the other day for the beach sand one. Uh, I've got a, a lot of material from Montana that I got when I was up in Montana and we're going to process that stuff through and what i've got for the first step of our processing is a set of screens and i've got this screen which is a uh, 12 mesh screen and then this one which is a 30 mesh screen and then below that a 50 mesh screen so i've got them well well processed uh so that i can uh break the gold into different size fractions. One of the tricks of processing black sands is to break it up into different size fractions because it's hard to separate the big stuff from the tiniest stuff. But if you just have all the tiny stuff, you can work with that. And you just have all the medium stuff, you can work with that. And you just have all the bigger stuff, you can work with that. It's just so much easier. And that's one of the secrets of processing black sands. And well, I'm gonna show you that. Then we'll uh, use the blue bowl to process the material further. And then eventually we'll get to using uh, a couple of magnets, a weak and medium scale magnet. Uh, I have a strong one that I use sometimes, but usually it's not necessary. And then uh, a final, careful panning and drying off and weighing the final concentrate or weighing the final clean gold to see how much we have. I expect that I've got a couple penny weight, at least a tenth of an ounce here in this black sand. So there's quite a bit of gold in there. I did see it before we bagged it up. Well, we didn't separate it out. I just saw it as I was cleaning up and checking the concentrates. Anyway, I expect at least a good tenth of an ounce, a couple penny weight, around a little over three grams uh, or better. You know, we'll, we'll see when we get to the final stage. So anyway, let me show you the screening part, which is the first step. First step being, of course, to open the bag. I sealed this up real good when I was in Montana. Okay, and this stuff has gotten pretty dry because it's been sitting in my garage for a little while. There's my black sand concentrates. And there's definitely some material that's plus 12 mash in there. Yep, very definitely. So good, I'm glad I used the 12 mesh uh, screen because that's going to give me a good result. Okay, well, let's put a little water in here. All right, and we'll empty some of our sand concentrates in here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and screen this stuff.
got to get it good and wet to screen it and then it's just a matter of rocking it back and forth to get it to go down through the screens yeah there's very definitely and because because this concentrate came from a placer mine that uh, produces both gold and sapphires um, in this coarsest fraction there should be some little tiny sapphire pieces and if you're interested in you know Montana mining for gold and sapphires well I did a video on that too I'll put a link to it right up here you might want to check that out anyway let's keep going with screening this yep there's a little piece of sapphire right there <laughs> the ones that are in this screen are just too small to do anything with there's a little piece of garnet too yeah oh okay well anyway i'm going to go ahead and finish screening the rest of this you don't need to to watch me do all the rest of the screen you've seen how it's done and it will break up into like i say a, a fraction for the uh 30 mesh i will go through and and make sure that all the stuff that can go through the 30 mesh goes through and then i'll do the 50 mesh down below last but uh, we'll start with this first process first and like i say i'll have you back to join me when i get closer to the end okay so stand by well i'm back and i've screened out all that material into four separate sections got three screens so when you always end up with one more than what the number of screens you have this is the over 12 mesh material it, meaning that it's it's bigger than about a tenth of an inch because uh when they say mesh mesh per inch just a, a bit of explanation meshes per inch means total space you know that you get meshes per inch and it includes not just the space per inch but it includes the wire too so if you have 10 meshes per inch the the hole will be less than a tenth of an inch square because it has to include the wire diameter also so this was a 12 mesh and uh, um, i screened it out and i'm going to just pan this there's not that much of it i am going to pick through and see if there's any um any sapphires or garnets or anything like that because uh, it might be nice to have and then uh, the next fraction that i got was this this is smaller than the 12 mesh so it went through the 12 mesh but bigger than uh 30 mesh so this is between 12 and 30 so uh, this should have some decent gold in it the other one that's uh, the bigger than 12 mesh it, i know i i did see at least one or two little flakes in there and i'll uh, for each one of these when i process them i will show you the gold but uh, then again this is not that much so i am just going to pan this and it's coarse so uh we'll just pan it and then this is the minus 30 mesh smaller than 30 mesh but bigger than 50 mesh and you can see there's hardly any black sand in it kind of interesting it's almost all quartz and and that sort of thing so um, i'm going to just pan this too because this should be light material i expect decent gold in this too and but again uh, it's not that much material so i'm going to pan it all right and then finally this in the bucket and hold the bucket so you can see um, this is the minus 50 mesh material and this is what i'll run through the blue bowl this is harder to pan and uh, more difficult to work takes more time and so we're gonna work this with the blue bowl so that shows you what i've got and i uh, I've showed you, told, told you about how I'm going to handle each one of them. So let me get started. I won't make you watch me do all of them because that'll take forever. But um, I'll go ahead and do the, the things and then I'll show you what I get 
for each stage. And as I mentioned before, I'll say it again because it's an important lesson, when you're processing black sands and other concentrates, it's important to screen them out and work with similar sizes together. It just makes the whole process so much faster and so much easier. And of course, as I get down on some of these smaller ones, I will use the magnets to help pull out any magnetic iron that's in there and that'll help speed up the process as well. So again, uh, I've, uh, I'm getting started with this and I'm gonna start first. I'm gonna basically go coarsest to finest and we'll start with this over 12 mesh and I'll be back with you in just a second to show you what I got as my result. Since I'm panning through all of this and I'm not really showing you every little step of the way, I thought that I'd give you a little bit of just instruction on the, the basic concepts of panning, which probably a lot of you know, but just in case. I mean, basically, this is the, uh, the minus 30 plus 50 fraction of, of the screens that I did. And what I'm doing is you basically put a reasonable amount, don't overfill your pan, and then shake it down real good. Because basically what you're doing is allowing the gold, which is of course heavier than the rest of the material, to settle and the lighter materials like quartz or felspar or whatever to float to the top. Or not really float, but rise to the top of the sand. And so once you get it shaken down well, then it's just a matter of dipping and washing the material off. And you can get a good rhythm of washing material off. Now you can't just do that forever until there's nothing left because you'll eventually have gold start showing through. So you shake it down again and then wash off. You'll see a lot of people on videos do a really violent kind of shaking and and washing and you know when you're you know I can start to see gold show through on this. Um, when you're doing that kind of heavy washing and shaking and the water's all muddy, it, gold goes out of your pan, you don't even see it. So especially when working with concentrates, you need to take your time and pan carefully and slowly and watch the material for you know little bits of gold, which I'm starting to see uh, showing through. And when it does, you gotta shake it back down and uh, and then get it back to your washing off again, washing the lighter material. And then once you've washed off most of the lighter material and the gold starts showing through, um, even before it starts showing through, you need to shake it off and get the lighter material back on the surface and wash that lighter stuff away. It's a process you just, you know, rinse and repeat, right? You just shake and repeat and shake and, you know, until you're down to the bottom of the pan. Now, I've got a whole bunch more. You can see, still got quite a bit of that fraction left to do. Um, so I'm gonna be working on this for a bit, but I thought I'd just give you a feel for how it works. This is what I did with the, the courses fraction. It's what I did with the 12 to 30 fraction. It's what I'm doing with this. And I'll get down to this and then We'll separately take the uh, the finest material, the minus 50, and run that through the blue ball. So, keeping you apprised of what I'm doing so that you can learn how this process works and, and get to see the gold at the end. Uh, so far, I'm doing really good. Uh, got some good gold with the, uh, the other coarse fraction. Uh, I got one little nice flake, as you saw, with the, the over 12 and... Got some decent gold with the uh, 12 to 30, and I'm sure I'll get some good gold with this 30 to 50 fraction. So hang in there. We're going to get this all taken care of. So now I'm going to show you the results of the panning efforts that I did. And here is the over 12 mesh size uh, from the concentrates that I had. And you can see on the left, I have one little picker nugget. And then the rest of these are, uh, well, the light blue and light green are sapphires and the dark red colored pieces are garnets so there was some small gems in in the the material here because this is from like i say a, 
a deposit that produces both beautiful sapphires as well as gold. So that's the oversized 12. Here's the next size fraction that I got. This is the smaller than 12 mesh, but larger than 30 mesh. And you can see it's a bunch of little flakes and pieces here. Um, this is uh, much more weight than the little picker nugget that I got out of the uh, oversized 12. And this is a, a nice yield and will contribute to the weight that we're getting. Here is the um, size that's smaller than 30 mesh, but bigger than 50 mesh. And again, it's a little flakes and, and pieces. And uh, this is what I got panning that. Now, the next size fraction is going to be too small to easily pan. It's the minus 50 mesh. And that's what I'm going to use the blue bowl for. So after this, I will show you my demonstration of the blue bowl. So now I'm going to do the blue bowl part. I've got uh, my black sand over here for the blue bowl. Unfortunately, I got to tell you that I already filmed this once, like, I don't know, several days ago. And uh, unfortunately, technical issues, I, I ended up with no sound. So I've got to do this over again. And uh, I'm going to run the blue bowl. And I just wanted to give you some information about the blue bowl perhaps one of the most important things about the blue bowl is that it be level okay I don't know if you can see the bubble there but it's right in the middle and of course you got to check it not just in one direction but check it in other directions as well okay so it's it's nice and level and so we're ready to go and what I will do is I will put some black sand in here and then I will get it going. Now I do have from my previous filming some uh, shots of the blue bowl as it's working and I'm gonna try and use that and do a voiceover on it. So if there's any technical bumps in the road, my apologies, but uh, I still think you can get the information you need out of this video. So we're gonna take the blue bowl, we're gonna put our black sand in it and we're gonna process it and uh, we've got a bucket here so that whatever water and sand that comes out, it goes in the bucket, nothing is lost. And uh, we're gonna run it and uh, I will show you, like I say, the running from the previous actual run, but you'll get to see it in operation today as well. Okay, you'll see the blue bowl is overflowing here, but I've, I've turned the flow down some. I'd like to turn the flow down when I add material. Now this big pan full of black sand is too much material to add all at once. Um, and I will also kind of spread it around here a little bit with my hand. All right. Now I'm turning the flow on. Okay, so I got it swirling. And one of the things that you want to note about running a blue bowl is, like I said, you got to keep it perfectly level. And, and I checked it with my, uh, with my level. And then the other thing is, is there's a correct speed for this thing to swirl at. And basically, um, it is possible to run them too fast and just blow stuff out. I like to keep mine a good, you know, finger width below the top. As you get faster and faster, uh, the material comes up. You get more of a dish as the water flows, right? And so the material comes up and eventually if the water's fast enough, it'll roll right off the top of the sides here. And when you get to that point that it's too high and it's going off the top of the sides, you're uh, definitely um, causing a situation where, um, where you're gonna be losing gold. What I wanna do is run it at an even speed for it to move the, uh, move the black sand, but not blow the gold out. That's the whole, whole goal of any, whether you're using a, a, a blue bowl or a gold cube or something else, um, the idea is you wanna move the lighter material and leave the heavier behind. So, you can see I'm, I'm running this. Uh, it's actually now down more than 
a, a little bit. So I'm gonna actually turn this up a hair. So now I've got it spinning pretty good. The normal way to run these things is with a recirculating pump. And uh, I just want to do this quickly because I'm having to reshoot a video. Normally I would have a table here, a catch tub, and I'd have the recirculating pump in that. And I'd still have the bucket, the, uh, the blue bowl would sit on top of bucket, so everything that goes out of the blue bowl in the center goes down into the bottom and into the, uh, the bucket. And then the overflow of the bucket would go into the catch tub and then that's where the recirculating pump would be. So the real way to run these with uh, better control is with a recirculating pump. But you can see that I'm kind of starting to move the material around here. Um, as it's circulating, I'm getting black sand uh, go up to the center and circulate and go into the bowl. They, basically, it, it, it comes out as it goes up the center cone and then drops down into my bucket. So I'm not losing any black sand. Any gold that goes out of this is all just going just into this bucket where I can reprocess it in the future if I decide I want to have a, a go at that. But this is a very efficient system. This is about how you want it to run. Like I say, a little bit below the, uh, the top is, is what you want to, to achieve. Now I'm gonna take this and spread this material back out again. I'm gonna add some more black sand. I generally try and add the black sand away from the uh, the part that the, the place where the water comes in. It just gives it more chance to swirl before it goes around and and out the bowl. So again, keep it level. Keep the water below the lip, maybe half an inch. And uh, if it starts getting too fast, then you want to use the adjuster to slow the water down. And that's pretty much it. And just take your time and let it circulate and wash the black sand out. And then uh, at the end, I will show you what I had before. I'm going to reuse some of my um, some of my footage that I'll just voice over it and you'll be able to see what I'm getting done and, and how I got a lot of gold out of this. And now you got a feel for how the blue bowl works. The only problem with it, I mean, it works great. The only problem, and I've said it before, is just that the blue bowl is kind of slow. It's kind of a slow process to, to get it. Sometimes in the summer, I'll do this and uh, just kind of set the blue bowl and I'll be doing something in my garden or something else, come back, add some more black sand, do some other things and just let it run on its own. Because once it really gets running, it's kind of running on its own. Once you get it dialed in, it doesn't take a lot of effort to, to keep it running. All right, so let's look at some of those other videos on uh, the blue bowl and I'll explain some of the other parts of it to you. So on this view of the blue bowl, I've slowed the water way down and you can see um, how these uh, sort of teeth form and uh, how the gold is. If you look real closely, you can see the gold on the bottom of the blue bowl. If you have a large enough screen, probably be hard to do on a cell phone. So here's the blue bowl with the water spinning. Everything gets sucked into the center. And at this point, and this is where I like to slow it down and spread the black sand back out so that uh, things can settle. So here's the blue bowl. I begin slowed it down so that you can see this is about the end of the stage. I don't like to run it until I get to the point where there's no black sand. 
and it's all clean gold sometimes people advertise that as being something you do with the blue bowl but when you're running really fine stuff you want to be careful because the force to blow that last little bit, bit of black sand out will also blow a fair amount of gold with it so you just for me i'm careful and uh, i take the black sand out with magnets so here's one of the sections where I recorded it and somehow we had some sort of technical error and I didn't get any sound off of it. So my apologies, but it's going to be pretty obvious that my voiceover isn't going to match my speaking on the video. Anyway, this is me. Um, I have at this point already, already gone through the blue bowl and gotten down to where, as I showed you just a minute ago, I was left with just a little black sand and the gold that uh, it's my thought that trying to push all of the black sand out will result in pushing some of the gold out too. So I think it's better the last little bit of, of magnetic uh, black sand to go ahead and take it out with a magnet. So here I am. I'm, uh, I've got the concentrates in the small blue pan and I'm going through with my weak magnet uh, to take at least the most magnetic stuff out of there and I do it very carefully the problem with using strong magnets to start off with is of course that you'll suck both the gold together with the magnetics so the the gold surrounding or the magnetic surrounding pieces of gold will get sucked up and, and you'll accidentally collect gold with your magnet so my way of dealing with that and not having to have that problem is to use a weak magnet to start off with this is a magnet that was once part of a speaker I've had it for years and it works really well it will only take out the most magnetic stuff and it uh, it does a good job it it can get the the bulk of the magnetic material but again I'm not trying to reach final cleanup with the uh, first material uh, going off there with a magnet what I'll do is come back here in just a second and I will go in with a stronger magnet to get the rest of the magnetic materials so here I am using my um, rare earth magnet this is a much much more powerful magnet than the first one um, but I've already taken out the bulk of the magnetic material with the weak magnet and now this approach of using the stronger magnet to pull out the more magnetic material I actually have a third magnet that I won't be using in this set of videos because actually the second magnet was sufficient to do the job but the third magnet is a much bigger rare earth magnet and it's a really powerful one um, and I use it once in a while when uh, some good cleanup is required but anyway this magnet uh, is a uh, strong magnet uh, strong enough anyway and it's sufficient for cleaning up the the remainder of the magnetic materials that are left in the uh, concentrates so sorry about the problem with the the technical problem with the sound and and that uh, things don't match but I, I think you have got a chance to see what I was doing here and I can explain pretty much what I was trying to do with just this voiceover and here's the nice clean product that I was done with after I completed going through and removing all the magnetics with my magnet uh, the water in the pan for some reason is a little murky but in any case you can see the clean gold final product there and uh, that the whole process the whole process that I did worked very well so now for the final weigh-in and here we have on my this is a carrot scale so 17.48 carats turns out to be equal just to about three and a half grams or uh, a little over two penny weight and roughly speaking all impurities considered this is something on the order of about hundred fifty dollars worth of gold which not too bad for the effort I put in 150 bucks um, that, that's a that's a nice addition to my poke 
Now, if you're wanting to become a better prospector and learn more about how to be finding your own gold and be successful in prospecting, well, I wrote a book about that and I'm going to tell you all about it right now. Okay, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, I wanted to be able to share the knowledge that I've gained about finding gold and, and how to be successful. And so I spent years literally writing this book, Fistful of Gold. It's more than 350 pages long, which is why I say it's an encyclopedia of everything you need to know about finding your own gold. Um, I've sold more than 8,000 copies and I've got a lot of really great feedback on it. It just is the most complete book on the market. It has information about finding gold that literally is not available in any other book that you're going to find for prospectors because I took technical stuff from geologists and other um, mineral scientists and I've translated that into language that the average guy can understand. You don't need a PhD to go out and find gold, but the information that scientists have learned over recent decades can can be of a lot of help to people. So it's in this book. Uh, if you're interested about finding gold, panning, sluicing, nugget detecting, uh, dry washing, the geology of gold deposits and how they form, it's all in here. And like I say, it's more than 350 pages long. So if you'll just go to the description underneath this video, um, you can take a look. I've got a link in there to take it to Amazon to the site where the book is sold. And I think you'll you'll really enjoy it. Take, take a look at all the people who've commented on this and have really liked the book. It has a, a very, very high rating for a book. And also, I have a, a website, my own free website that uh, you can take a look at. Um, I've got all kinds of information on here about uh, doing research and how to find gold, a lot of good information, stuff that basically uh, couldn't fit into my book. And so I put it on this website and I have a, a link also for that in the video description. So take a look in the description and you can click on the, uh, the link and it'll take you to my website. And finally, if you like this presentation, I've got a lot more coming out. Here's a three and a half ounces of gold that I found a couple years back in one area. Um, I've got a lot more of these videos coming on gold, gemstones, hard rock, placer, a lot of metal detecting. There'll be lots of metal detecting stuff. So if you really enjoyed this, click the subscribe button and then tick the notification bell off and YouTube will let you know when I publish new stuff. And hit the like button as well. And please comment on these videos because I'm interested in what you have to say. And I promise to answer any questions you have. So if you are wondering about anything or think maybe I didn't cover something thoroughly enough in a video, then let me know and I'll be happy to try and help you out and give you whatever information you need. So thanks a lot and I um, hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you again real soon.